and I'm going to go ahead and remove the whoa how do I end? okay there we go sorry about that we start the week um, hoping that everything goes well for you and that we continue well and in a good mood let's begin this conference this press conference as they used to call it before now we call it a circular dialogue and we're going to initiate by the presentation of Ricardo Shakespeare that will bring us over the who's who in the gas prices and gas. Yeah. And then we'll open it up for questions and answers. So, good morning, Mr. President. Hello, everybody. The matter of who's who in gas, regular, this week had the price of 21.52, and that was in uh, uh, Zapoplan, Jalisco. That was apparently a very high price. <laughs> and, uh, the most economical was in uh, Tabasco Center, Centro Tabasco. Grupo Davila S.A. of the CB at 1780s. So they're getting the recognition. And premium was at 22 in Monterey, Nuevo León. The, the highest price, and then 1896, Veracruz, and diesel in Sonora, the highest price was 21.99, Hermosillo, Sonora. It's a 31 cent margin, and in Gualalpa, uh, Guerrero was 1989. And the president uh, has this session every Monday. And ARCO uh, and Shell adjusted their prices and it lowered because uh, they're now in fourth place in the uh, well, Shell is now in fourth place. Arco is in second place. Chevron is still the highest priced of combustibles. And apparently it's all the same gas. They get it from the same person. They just have a different name. So don't think you're getting better gas if you're getting Chevron. <laughs> There's three gas prices that, I'm sorry, three gas stations that did not allow it to be verified. So now they're going to be checked eh, secretly. <laughs> and so they, they uh, find irregularities in the uh, leaders, that they're not a complete leader. So they've been uh, 153 did not have irregularities, nine did have irregularities. And um, they verified 2,836 uh, hoses and uh, pumps. So that happened. So there was three places. Uh, so they uh, did not allow themselves to be tested in three stations. And he said the names. So they are using the uh, app, and they're very happy with how it works. And they appreciate any, if you find any issues, to let them know so they can keep perfecting the app. And he reminds you it's a pre-app. 
And the prices that are registered that have been raised um, via the uh, report, the most economical was at 1759, was in Coatzacoalcos, Veracruz, and the highest was in uh, Talpa de Allende, Jalisco. And the premium most expensive was 2310. That was in Nayarit, Bahia de Banderas. And the lowest price was Agua Dulce, Veracruz for the premium at 18.96. Uh, diesel gas is 19.29. And the most expensive is 23.14. So now we're going to the who's who in the gas LP which is the little tanks and the most expensive was 10.99 in Chihuahua 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 or Centro de Gas de Chihuahua it's a tw margin of 23 cents per liter and the lowest was 6.87 in Santiago Ma Mia Huatlan, Puebla, Centro de Abastos de Tehuacán, del Rio de CB. Uh, cylinders of gas, the, the price uh, had eight uh, peso margin, and that was in Los Cabos at 20.5. In Los Cabos, which was the very highest, and then the lowest was in Tarifa Mich Tarin Faro Michoacán, which was at 14.08. And in case of the verification of last week, uh, for those they verified 32, there was some. Um, problems with. So anytime that they refuse, they have a special operative to check them. And in other words, I think they're going to sneak in there and check them when they're not realizing they're being checked or they'll have somebody check them with some kind of a verification uh, measuring device. So they check the verify. Um, they so 124 they found with problems that they checked that puts consumers at risk. So they keep maintaining this uh, indicator low. So now this is the information. Is there nothing over this? No, apparently not. No, they just want to start. They want to just start on the rest. The rest of it can wait. So he's called on somebody. Hello, Mr. President. On the weekend, we had some good week from the doctors. Uh, due to the acquisition of medications for cancer, and it's very important. My question is regarding the uh, medical department. It's going to take about a minute and a half, but he says it's in context. That there's something in the aims. They have a deficit of specialists. And part of the problem is the government, or the previous government, because they prevented a, a specialists from going to the hospital. The doctors are going to answer 405 questions in Spanish and uh, 45 in English. There's about 80,000, and they'll pay 3,000 for the 
pesos for the exam, but only 8,000 8, will be able to get the job. Is there something going on with the um, bachelors in the in the uh, universities? I made some kind of formula. If those 8,000 that will be allowed to work, if we uh, divide them uh, in the specialties, and if we want to cover the whole country, we need to send nine specialists per discipline. But if we want to send them to a place like uh, Oaxaca, so in a region like Oaxaca that has like over 500 municipalities, or in the principal state, the reality is that the previous governments created a situation where we have not enough specialists in the country. So are you disposed to duplicate or at least duplicate the spe a place for, for specialists? Then you also give them the automatic pass to the specialists that have already gone through the courses in this filter before and that they can uh, pass automatically to the ones in Eames if they've been working already. Because even after they come out from their specialty, they're not even guaranteed a job and they haven't been accepted. Even the ones that work, um, that those 140 million that uh, they suspect that they need to suspend the contracts that are for just one in three and six months because they're too um, the doctors are requesting that they be that they uh, allow the doctors uh, authorize the medical and doctors and specialist personnel before they start uh, dealing with the administrative jobs because they want to apply UNAM. Uh, something to do with the infrastructure. And that looks like there's six to seven agencies that they have to deal with. But they need to apply it to UNAM. Why? There's uh, previous situations antecedent. So something is, was even 110,000 in the black market that they exist, that he's asking for something to be stopped. But I'm not really clear what <laughs> That's a whole lot of questions. <laughs> he says, your question and your reflection is some matter that we are attending to. I believe that in a short time, like maybe a week, we will present here the plan that we have for the contracting of doctors and nurses and specialists. Because in effect, there's vacancies. I was just in Guajira this uh, weekend in Yucatan and Tepechi visiting the hospitals. And in the case of Yucatan, four out of four hospitals that I visited from Ims Benestar, in three of them, they have no uh, pa pediatric uh, specialist or doctor. And these are hospitals that attend a 
a, a considerable percentage. Of women that are pregnant, and these are uh, hospitals in which they have uh, a minimum of two to three babies a day, and there's some they even have five or six babies born at the minimum two, and they have no uh, pediatric uh, specialists. We are talking about the best service because in relation to other uh, health centers, these are even better. And the one that is is still in worse condition is INSTE. So we are attending to this for action that will be applied immediately and we are already uh, working on that there not be a shortage of medication and that we uh, better the infrastructure so we are trying to help all the medical workers in the health sector and that's why I'm proposing and we are working towards to deal with uh, health, to, co to ask, make a request, and that in effect we will resolve all these obstacles, all these stumbling blocks, that so that doctors can work in the public sector of health. And we are also defining a tabulator that will, will help us to pay more uh, for the people that are working in the most marginal and impoverished areas because a lot of the specialists don't want to go to the outskirts because it's easier for them to work in the capitals or where there's more people. And it is true that it combines the job uh, with security and insurance with, with consulting places and the work that is done and it complements in that way their income and this I consider legal and legitimate however also with the uh, the areas that are the furthest out with the most impoverished they need doctors and specialists so some way to the way to stimulate that they go to these outskirts is to, is for this social service, is that you give them pay and medicine um, because it's a profession that, that is a humanitarian uh, thing. They need to attend first the ones that are the m in most need for, of health care, more uh, attention to health. So we are looking at this, and I could say that in about a week to 10 days, right here, we're going to uh, ask uh, to be contracting more nurses, more doctors, more specialists, and resolve the vacancies. And also to look at this regarding the courses and specialists and obstacles, and what does it do to, and the, the lack of hospitals that also are by the, that also have 
problems with schools and uh, getting uh, doctors trained. All of this, look at this, revise it. And that's what we're working on. Revise a review. And the question is opportunity. That's why I decided to visit all the hospitals. It's not the same thing to be sitting here getting reports as to going and actually looking with at it and see the condition, the equipment, the medicines, and listen to the, to the doctors and the nurses and listen to the people as to how they're being treated, all of these things. And I'm expecting that soon we will be able to provide this service. And that is why we will increase the budget, a, a health budget, 40,000 million pesos, in order to have more resources and so that we can comply with these four actions. So he says, yesterday we had some people pending that we didn't get to uh, finish. Thank you. Uh, so he's going to let him talk. Rafael Herrera uh, works with Vicente Serrano. A few days ago you talked about ethics, Mr. President, and you also said that the press regulates itself with the press. Let me give you, ask you a question regarding what Serrano said. How important is it for your government and this fourth transformation to separate politics uh, from the media? And they're talking about the ex-director was uh, winning, uh, earning 700000 So, Secretary, this family needs to be uh, Okay, so he's talking, they're talking about and they're protecting animal politico and animal politico has content in face is controller of facebook in mexico and they who's ver uh, verifying the verifier because apparently the um there's a company called animal politico which is controlling what news is allowed to go in and they believe that there's something uh, not right with that uh, company that's actually verifying and they're stopping. I do believe that we need to uh, separate the an economic power from the political power. That's what one of their, a migrant recommended to me from somewhere else. And he had told, I listened to him and I am in total agreement with what he expressed. It, it's been about two, two and a half year. I'm sorry, two years or a year and a half. He said to me, Licenciado, the way the President Juarez separated the power, civil power, from the church, because for God, is, what is God and Caesar's to what is Caesar. Now the reform that is necessary is is separating the economical powers from political powers, and that is wise with its uh, council. It is a very good council because what was happening is that the government was at the service of a minority. It was a committee to the service of uh, interests, created interest groups. So
So when you separate the economical power from political power, then the government represents everyone. The rich, the poor, those that live in the fields, in the cities, those that are believers, those that are unbelievers, all Mexicans. It, it could be that the economical power could be have they could have uh, media communication because there's also that uh, bad custom well not now but before that where they used to protect the uh, economical powers with with the media of communication but this doesn't exist now. This has changed. And it is being accepted by all. I have no pressure from media. I have no pressure from um, businesses. But sometimes, there's some pressures. Uh, to try to um, get to the government, but this is normal in a democracy. What is important is not to mix economical powder with the politics. It's like not mixing delinquency with authority. It, that's another um, thing that was happening, a vice that was happening. They used to ally delinquency with authority. And so there was no borders, no definition. Imagine in one municipality where they The Secretary of Public Security proposed to delinquency. <laughs> so then there is no guarantee of security for the citizens. And that's how it used to be. Because the campaigns in order to win used to get money. And they used to tr try to triumph at any cost without any scruples. That's why it's important to have morals. So, so they would win. And then they would... We would have to give them their secretary of public security. And then the secretary of works. And then on top of that, the presidency, the complete municipal uh, presidency. So this has to be eradicated and finished with. We need to separate. One thing is delinquency, another thing is authority. One thing is private uh, businesses, the other are public works. You cannot be mixing these together and not to utilize the government to pro protect in private interests or of particular people. So are then are you going to investigate this situation that lasted so long, like in China? Yes, we are not, we said we are not going to open files I've said it with much clarity. Only unless there's some kind of a complaint and that has to do with the uh, uh, 
a district attorney to, to follow it up. And of course, I also have a commitment not to stop any uh, complaint and not to prohibit or inhibit a complaint and not to talk uh, with the district attorney to say, hey, I would like you to do this or that, or it would be convenient for me. No, this is not the time that we could touch the untouchable. That's another thing. There's no more impunity. But we do not move or promote these uh, uh, complaints. I said it even before I took my position because then we would have to open a lot of files. There would be no judgments enough. There wouldn't be jails enough. And we would be dedicated to that entirely. Imagine how much it would, how, what a waste, and we couldn't set the, the, the basis for the future. They used to say, oh, if, if you put the corrupt people in jail, then you can construct a new Mexico that's different. No, not necessarily. It is more important, or what is more important is to that the um, legal uh, uh, laws change so that they can actually um, bring justice and then we can look at corruption as something not good and not be and he says my adversaries don't like that but we got to say yuck to uh, to corruption disgusting anybody who has a a, a mark of corruption, they will not be able to remove it with any water because they, they will be looked badly upon by the people of Mexico. Not to celebrate corruption. It's because that's the worst of the bad things. They didn't even lose their respectability, even more so. It came to an extreme that they didn't even think, feel as if they were corrupt. The one that stole a, a, a bag in the store, or like a wallet, he was a thief. But they were stealing are doing business. Business. <laughs> business, he says. But it's a change, a complete change. Now we do not permit corruption. And there's a separation between the political power and the uh, uh, business. Yes, of course, we can still do business. We couldn't take Mexico forward without uh, businesses or with public investments. You require private investors. However, it's a process in order to, uh, for that private companies can also act with a code of ethics. I used to comment that up to a while ago, an association of great uh, corporations of the United States during uh, 50 years had a purpose to contain utilities. And then it, it just reformed its proposals and with a code of ethics that now establishes that not only the businesses need to look for the utilities, but they also have to uh, 
be attentive so that their workers can get better salaries and better benefits and that the companies should not affect the, the environment and that they need to behave with honesty. So these are the changes that are taking place in the world. And we are very happy because this is what we are trying to do. This decision was taken after we uh, we have decided to eradicate corruption in our country. And we have talked also of the companies and their responsibilities for ethics and that there be reasonable utilities, just utilities, not uh, weights weighted down because sometimes they would get a contract. There's cases, documented cases, where they used to receive the, the advance in order to sell something. You recall the tank cars from Pemex? That they gave the advances and they never did the make those uh, car tanks. So they kept the, the uh, advances, and there is a judgment, uh, the, so then they, they become, they start work fighting, and when I was in the peninsula of Yucatan, and Curticul, there's a hospital that they left inconcluded, a business that has three areas that are inconcluded or not concluded, inconclusive. These contracts used to stay, which they call APP, for which the government uh, this, uh, federal government has to pay a lot of money. If a hospital costs 500 million, they wind up paying within 20 years 5,000 million. Ten times more, and sometimes even 20 times more. And before, they committed a budget from the states. They came, uh, made up agreements with Hacienda. And the constructor used to pay, get paid every year. And, they, and we are still paying it because we, of course, we have to pay our debts. With this system that they established, in, during the neoliberal period. So in this hospital, they left it half done. And they contract a government in Yucatan. And then the new government comes in and he reviews that they were not complying. They weren't advancing in the construction. So he decided to cancel the contract. So now the company is asking, uh, like, uh, he's asking, they're asking for 150 million pesos because they stopped paying them, so now everything's in ruins and the construction stopped. So now we are looking for a way to resolve it. But there the company has to, has to understand that they have abused. 
if they did not comply. And now that they are asking for 150 million pesos to reinitiate the uh, works. So therefore, these things are the ones that are no longer, can no longer continue to happen. We need to end all this corruption because why did they do this thing? Because they would go to Hacienda. The same guys from Hacienda used to call their friends to recommend to them these um, uh, companies. And that's how they paid uh, the budget year to year for these works. That is now ended. And some are angry about this, but they need to understand that, and fortunately a lot know that you, they can no longer continue this behavior. And, and that these um, uh, false um, uh, because they don't like to us to have uh, sanctions of these illicit. Imagine how much fiscal um, uh, budget is documented, including the office of investigation, financial investigation, that has presented cases of possible uh, crimes by these type of uh, document of um, what do you say uh, receipts. Like, remember when they used to have these reports where a company used to finance a campaign? And then they would go look at the address of the company. And it was a little modest house. But in a lot of cases, and sometimes the owner of the house didn't even know, or it was some kind of worker. There's proof of the, all of this. So then how to, we can, per, can we permit this to continue? How can we put, why, because uh, we need to uh, make it a grave crime for um, companies that are making false um, receipts and are not complying because it also means evading taxes and less uh, collection tax of taxes. And so then the government, like they used to, they would have to increase the taxes and create new taxes. So what was the thinking, the concept that was predominant in these times of these technocrats, of these neoliberals? Well, they had this thing about charging more taxes. So what was the fiscal reform? Well, that that the people needed to tighten up their belts more. <laughs> so what's the difference now? <clears throat> that now the government is tightening its belt. <clears throat> We're not asking the people to tighten up their belts. And that's how clear it is. Because they used to come out with this story that it was too little what they were co collecting in taxes in Mexico um, in relation to other countries. So 
So of course they had to raise the the taxes. But in the budget, if it were like that, the first thing that the government should have done was to give an example of an administration that was honest, efficient, without waste. And then after that, if there was not enough, after there's no corruption, that there's austerity, and there was none, not enough, then, then there's a possibility that there be more contribution. But here, they would increase the contributions and they continued stealing and the waste. It was very unjust, very unequal. So then, yes, there is a change in that sense. So Claudia was left, didn't get to answer last time. So she's saying, I want to ask you regarding three matters. Something about a scandal from the district attorney. He says the district attorney needs to handle that matter. I understand it was presented by a director of the PRI that was the governor of Oaxaca, Ulises Ruiz. And so therefore, the, the district attorney has to deal with all the complaints that are presented from any citizen and, and to uh, let's see what the district attorney resolves let's not get ahead of ourselves with the results and have confidence in the district attorney that it's important. Well, do you think the opposition might think it's getting political persecution? No, because we don't act in a perverse way. We are not like the previous governments that used the uh, district attorney to persecute and fabricate uh, crimes for their opponents or opposers or to protect themselves to for the presumptive uh, delinquents so we are not and we have said many times that everything that nothing under the margin of the law and nothing over the law and zero corruption and zero impunity. It could be, but not of ours. And I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what they said. We do not use those procedures. And the second matter I wanted to ask, did something about an honesty, uh, something about the honesty of the uh, parties, what do they have? Like people who aspire to go to those positions, uh, like I cannot get involved with any suggestions that I made that belongs to be decided by the or uh, 
the ones that direct Morena. I am. I do not get involved in the internal politics of Morena. I gave a uh, suggestion with the purpose that there not be any confrontation, but it's nothing more than an opinion, and I do not have an intention to get involved in uh, internal matters of any party. I am not going to do it. it I have as my responsibility to govern the country, and I cannot be a group of a faction or party. I am the representative of all Mexicans. So if they act in a factious way and they participate using resources or, or dedicating the time or work in the government in order to uh, promote perverted or parties, they are committing a crime. And I remind you, and I'm going to take the opportunity to remind you that electoral crimes are now grave crimes and that there is a district attorney, electoral, that will attend to these matters. So if there's elements and of proof, present them. All the complaints that are given to the electoral elected uh, district attorney, it's very important that they understand and know that there exists a district attorney that is anti-corrupt, where you have to take all your complaints, that there exists a elected uh, district attorney, and that corruption and fraud, electoral fraud, are now grave crimes. That's one of the changes that has been gained. So therefore, we need to give them some work, those institutions, those two institutions. And perhaps, but not not perhaps, but for sure, that 90% of the Mexicans don't know that it even exists. These two instances, or these two agencies, offices, agencies of the government, and that they need to help us. This is part of the changes and the transformation of Mexico, of the fourth transformation. That which all the citizens participate, because it's a matter for all. It's not a matter just for politicians. Like, like they used to think or say before, it's a matter for all. If you know that a public official or public servant is doing party jobs, you need to let people know. You need to turn them in. And more so, if he is utilizing uh, resources of our budget, that is money that belongs to all the people, and it should not be utilized to favor any party. That has ended the uh, giving of uh, uh, trafficking of the poverty of people, politics, the conditional or to condition the programs to adapt to their party. That is will be, will go to the history, the waste 
a can or garbage can of history. What about the expressions of uh, ex-president? <laughs> President uh, Fox is saying, ex-president <laughs> is saying that they want to destroy the fourth transformation, and he said, no comment. I want to ask you something about some guy quit his job or her uh, some people confronted each other with the bodyguards or something regarding this um, I don't know uh, controversy they were saying that it supported the fourth transformation that there's a, they said that there's something about 4,000 public workers are going to be uh, cut it's very lamentable that Pedro Salmero presented his resignation because due to a text that so, someone wrote uh, regarding some matter that happened that was lamentable that happened in Monterrey and that cost the life for Señor Garza Sal. Pedro Salmerón is one of the um, best historians in Mexico, an academic from grades, and a doctor in history from UNAM. But more than that, he is an investigator. Very uh, professional and uh, uh, has um, he's uh, the one that has done the best investigation that has been known regarding the division of the north a work that was exceptional I respect him very much He's an extraordinary intellectual of first order, first rate. And that's why it is lamentable that due to this text, they did this whole um, controversy uh, generated. But I also consider that we need to prevent confrontation. We need to make a change for a uh, r route to concordance. Our adversaries of conservatives are morally destroyed. They are looking for every possible error or failure because they want to to um, group themselves they want to constitute themselves into this group that is reactionary like they've had in the past every time that they had a uh, transformation in this country. So then, let's not give them any reason. And also, in a sincere way, we need to be respectful. I've had to 
self limit myself. I like you don't know how much. Or like have self control. But we all have to do it. Because that's what the circumstances require. And because we are doing well and we are advancing. Without confrontation, without um, without aggression, major aggression, without violence, and we are taking forth a transformation. Imagine how they feel those that felt like they were the owners of Mexico. Those that did not used to pay taxes. Those that had employees, the, as employees, the public uh, officials. So yes, there is so this sensitivity, this ambient that we need to be monitoring or looking at, and we tr need to try to tranquilize it, make it more serene. It has already passed, and it helped us very much, this decision, because in this way, he leaves it without, with argument, without arguments uh, for the adversaries, and let it be uh, we need to make sure that we need to separate between families. That there's not anything, uh, any bad feeling. A pain. It is a pain to be, to lose a, 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 a family member and and friends and separate that from the adversaries the pol our ad political adversaries for example that the ex-presidents come out and they raise this flag these are just matters that are separate different So do you think it's him? He's an investigator. It's like the liberty of Cátedra. You cannot be uh, putting a desk, uh, a writer, uh, to, to be censored. But on the other hand, we, I consider that the expression was not adequate. It was one word. It was jóvenes valientes. And so he was had a certain reasoning regarding this matter. But the best thing is not to confront, not to have confrontation. Yes, it corresponds to the secretary, and I give my general opinion. I think that that was the best thing. And I would even say that 
that Pedro is worth more as an investigator than as a functionary or a public official. Uh, that is to say, he is a grand historian, not a, a good historian, a grand, a great historian. historical uh, financial times that the budget is not sufficient and that there's that they need more investment for infrastructure and it's all part of the same thing I feel that the the budget is enough because it guarantees the well-being of the majority of the people, of the citizens. So this newspaper says that it does not consider the contracts of payments. Of course not. Why are we going to continue with that uh, politics if they lied to us? That uh, a newspaper should ask for a, uh, a forgiveness because they were the ones that were publicizing that the energy reform meant the panacea, panacea that we were going to be producing 3 million barrels a day and they left us a government with less than 1,700,000. And instead of saying we made an error, they want more to lie to us more. They want to tell us more lies. That is why let's not let ourselves be taken advantage by that press. He says reforma is better than that. <laughs> reforma is like the worst newspaper in Mexico. <laughs> So, what would be your posture if there was a climate uh, emergency? Like, for example, this, the French one and re regarding some climate emergency. Are you going to uh, declare a uh, climate emergency? A couple of years ago in the state of Mexico, the president made a demand of the, from the General Republic at that time, from Veracruz. So are you going to let the people go against this ex-governor that they're making a demand regarding this last part? I did not present any formal complaint against nobody in the case of Veracruz that I recall. Can you give me more uh, data? Oh, it was before the election. You said that you were going to go to the, that against, because he was had financial growth. No, I did not do it. I'm not so sure, but I did present some complaints during its time against Salinas and Cedillo and against Fox and against Calderón. 
but that was in the past he did it. And that's why I can say that I have moral authority. When I was their opposer, I actually gave um, proof and uh, complaints that were documented. I put a complaint against Presidente Peña for what I consider to be a uh, the energy reform bill, which I consider to be a uh, traitorous act against the country. But of this guy, I do not recall. But it's. But I can't say for sure right now at this time because of those complaints. Because I've already given my opinion. In its time, yes, I, I had to not only make it public in the plaza but also had to go present it to the competent authorities. And I always did it when I was an opposer. But now I am not in that place, and I cannot do that. So regarding the climate emergency, more than to uh, declare climate emergency, what we have to do is to take actions in order to regenerate the ambient the environment, to reforest, to clean, to clean the water, to prevent that they continue contamin contaminating it the water as well as the air, that they not keep uh, d destroying the territory. And I'm satisfied because we are planting trees for wood trees like never before in the country. This is a, a fight that is taking place because there still continues to be clandestine uh, uh, takes that are doing everything possible to prevent the, uh, we're doing everything to prevent the destruction of the forests, and we are being careful with that, protecting our our forests and also planting trees. And we are taking care of the water. And we are not giving permits for the exploitation of mines like they did before anteriorly. We are not giving permits for exploitation irrationally of water, including there is more control of the use of water in certain regions where there was a, uh, a um, little bit of water. There was not enough water. And now we're giving permits to create um, uh, milk plants in the north where there's no water. Or for constructing plants that uh, have, uh, that make beer in the north. Imagine that they had this idea to construct a plant to, to produce beer in Mexicali. No. If you want to put a plant to put beer, like if we needed it, you can do it on the southeast. 
and suck up what but there's there's several places that have water there's 70 percent of the water from the country is there and the milk companies or the dairies also because milk is mostly mo mostly water So producing milk means that you're going to cultivate uh, alfalfa, which requires a lot of water. So therefore, where are, should these activities happen? Well, where there's water. It's the same thing when it has to do with politics. Regarding um, human, urban, instead of the people continue to come to the center of the country, what about the lower states? Why don't we try to develop the coasts? Uh, and we want to help that the people stop immigrating, that the people be happy and work and have well-being where they were born, where their families live. But for that, we have to destinate the investment to the south and southeast and not to continue investing where they always did. There has to be a development that is more horizontal. And so that is what we're trying to do. What if, are you against fracking? Yes, totally. It's forbidden. It is for fracking is forgiven just as it is forgiven, uh, forbidden. And particularly uh, uh, trans, like um, what do you call that the the grain that is uh, not natural and that's what we're going to give our as a inheritance to our generations so we need to take care of the environment Thank you, Mr. President. Regarding the matter which you've dealt with today, which has to do with fiscal evasion, in the past few weeks, I've had the opportunity to remind and to follow. I have a, a picture of a desolate area that has a hundred uh, more than a million three hundred fifty thousand the people that are um, work in confections and uh, basic industry which is um, uh, building uh, uh, fabrication of clothing they've uh, found that they've been bringing contraband clothes because have, they have no other way of doing it. This contraband uh, has to do with from the uh, people that people that are transporting and the people that are in the. There's like, they have big. Uh, if they don't agree to pay the money for the containers. So there's some kind of contraband going on with clothing and buying clothes. And they have a technical contraband. They have uh, lots of merchandise. So they say that it comes from the U.S., but it comes from other areas, like from the Orient and from the Middle East. So 80% of the textile workers have, 
had uh, to close and losses, and some are completely. Did, were you aware of this situation? And what is your strategy to help them? As you say, as you have, if, as you have said, that you're generous for jobs for the country. Yes, there's two things that we are checking. First, we're cleaning, which was the um, management of the port ports of entry. And the person that is there now uh, is, a, is an honest person, integral. And that's why we named him for that, to clean the... Uh, the ports or customs. Historically, it's been known that it is one of the areas of the most corruption, and we are in there cleaning up. And there will be results in that area. We have that purpose to clean the aduanas. What they say is that they've noticed that the government is actually the directors, um, that the directors are in a zero corruption, but it's, it's the ones below them that are doing that. Yes, we have that problem. That in all the government, where we start at the top, we have problems with inspectors. And when it has to do with customs, fishing, and, and also the problems that they continue in immigration. We have to go cleaning from the top to the bottom. But I say to those people that we're going to put them in order. And it may take some time, but it will be cleaned up from corruption in these uh, Customs. The next thing is, or the other thing is, that it's important for you to know that we are going to support the industry of clothing and shoe industry. We have five objectives where related to the productive areas. First, to uh, have a popular economy. Second, to support strategic um, projects for the development of Mexico. Uh, he's mentioned a couple. The, the growth of the energy sector. And I can say that I can give you good news that we passed from 38% of capacity of production in the refineries to 50%. That is a very good piece of data. That, so we are producing more gasoline in all of six total. And that's the second thing. The third thing is to fortify the internal market and the support of textiles. We are going to utilize the bank to give uh, low credits from the government and to uh, assist the, um, the textile and uh, shoe industry that we're going to uh, reactivate the internal market. And the fourth is an agreement, which is already being constituted for Mexico in order to give facilities for investment. And point number five is a foreign investment. So why do I talk about these five conditions? Because one, one of them is destined to support the industry of textiles. And it is very correct, your diagnostic, 
uh, and I am conscious and informed. And not only am I preoccupied, but I am work occupied working on it. So regarding these figures that have to do with more with the secretary that are being used. For example, there's a program where Mexico can be a third custodian of merchandise. So then the people doing the contraband are putting, uh, they make it. So it's a farce that they're utilizing to bring uh, merchandise in very low prices. So it's giving a, a problems to the uh, local businesses. Yes, I am listening. I'm sure the Secretary of Economy is listening. Graciela Marquez. And they will look into that because there is abuses in all these areas and these permissions and all these norms that have been created and that have given uh, forth uh, to acts of corruption. But we are making the way to prevent that there be corruption. Will there be an opportunity that the director of um, customs be able to come? Yes, of course, that would be helpful to me because it's part of what we're doing. And it helps in the sense that we not allow the application of, um, and if you have an investigation and you can give us the real data so we can follow it up and attend to it, to the, to the demand or the claim and resolve the problem. Thank you, Mr. President. Didn't we have somebody pending? Two more, and then. We are investing in the refineries that we didn't used to do before. And we found that they were not processing enough crude in the refineries because they weren't working at full capacity. In general, they are not still not functioning at full capacity, but we are producing. There were some that were even stopped that had months without operating because they weren't being supported uh, for the technicians of the refineries with the necessary um, things that they needed. Besides, in every, even in, like they had no uh, tools and, and uh, parts. And even though they have a um, mechanic shop, they weren't giving them the resources so that they could do the repairs. Or it was, they would say it cost too much. And due to corruption, they continued the same way. It's the most uh, uh, clear uh, example of corruption in the refineries that within 15 years, they invested 8,000 million pesos, dollars, in the rehabilitation of three refineries. And they called them, the configuration is what they called it, 8,000 million dollars. Anatlitlan, Cadereyta, y Madero. And they did not reconfigure the other three. 
Salina Cruz. Tula. Tula. In Salamanca. Those were the ones they did not reconstitute. Six. There's six altogether. Imagine this. The three that they did not reconstitute have more production than the three that they supposedly reconstituted. So where did the money go? Those 8,000 million best, uh, dollars. So you can prove this. So what happened? They wasted the money. They did not utilize it adequately. And finally, we found that they, they had, they were only using them at 38% of their capacity. This year, the initial investment was 7,500 million pesos. And we are adding uh, 5,000 more, and it's 12,000. And we initiated a process of rehabilitation. And that has permitted us, as of now, to increase the capacity of production to 50% in its conjunction. So I am going to be giving you the information from each one of them and what is their projection that we have ahead. Yes, we want to take to take 75% per year by the end of year for six because we're going to repeat the investment. That is what we invested this year. We'll repeat it again next year. This will help us a lot because we'll be buying less gas from the foreign places. And I am giving you uh, the complete information I'm going to ask for from the director of Pemex and the secretary to come and inform and regarding petroleum and extraction of petroleum. Yes, in that matter, we've advanced as well. First, they detained the, the, we've detained the fall or decline, and now it's stabilized just so that you can have the data. Last year, we lost 200,000 barrels a day during the year. And in January of 2018, the production was 1,200,000 barrels. And that was January on the, of 19. It was 1,700,000. But the tendency was downward. In 14 years, let's say, in 14 years, a loss of production, 14 years continuously of loss of, um, and we were able to gain this year to stabilize it. That's what we gained. So now we have million seven uh, barrels that we received in January. To as of now, but now it's going to start going upward, the production. And we have, as a calculation, 50 million before the end of the year to increase. And we've gained 
to continue advancing in the preparation of um, uh, pits. And it would be good to inform you regarding these matters. And I'll be asking for that from the director of Pemex and Hacienda. Can you give us more details regarding how much you knew that there was there was a uh, need for these medications that were coming basically from one company that was producing them, or there was two or three. But finally, this particular company, as they call it, a monopoly today, <laughs> oh, the pre um, the potent, uh, preponderant uh, company. I don't want to advance. Uh, what, but I do, due to a uh, lack of sufficiency, or maybe intentionally, we didn't have it, the medications. And we made a decision to buy it externally and I was informed that it was a delicate matter and it included that they were already threatening that they were going to make a campaign to attack us. That was a report I received. And not due to the campaign, but the matter, it was an urgent matter for a meeting for the secretaries of the cabinet, for the health, the health in East and Hacienda, Secretary of Marines, Secretary of Defense, and I asked them that they implement a program to buy the medications where wherever it be that it was urgent and that we had to do it between all of us and prepare ourselves so that we do not have this happen again that we not have emergencies where that we not be dependent from one a provider, but instead that we have options, and it was seen legally that it could be done, and the law permitted it, that we buy medication in foreign places. And of course, it's a matter that's priority. And if we continue to have these problems of provisions, we will continue to go to buying from foreign countries. And it will apply it again. So the campaign that you said was coming, do you know who was, who was doing it? They used to tell me in my report that it was, they were already asking the senators had to go visit the uh, child that they wanted us to go visit the hospital so that we could see there was no medication. And yes, there wouldn't be any medication because because they they weren't giving it to us. They weren't giving us supplying us. No, they just simply, they were not 
giving it. It may be belie believable, as, as it is explained to me, that it treats cancer. That is contrary to popular belief. It's not very expensive. That is very important, that it doesn't cost very much, and they don't care to making it. Because it doesn't get used very much. But that's another thing. Marina is helping us with that. It's because we're looking at that uh, conjunctly for the whole uh, health plan. And I am expecting that all these things will be attended to and will be resolved because it was very it was a bad system for the production and distribution and the purchase of medication it was a business just one more business and we're talking about medications Yes, of course. No, it doesn't matter. It is not lost because the most important thing is health. And besides that, corruption was so rampant that they could even, we could even buy it cheaper. Were political people involved in the cuts? Yes. But if, but I'll let you, uh, I'll give you that homework to figure out and investigate who. Okay, I've got to go. We'll see each other tomorrow. Tomorrow, put yourself on the list. Whatever it is, tomorrow.